Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as promised, I am going to be doing some different types of videos. I know I've been doing a lot of collections lately, um, so I'm going to be taking a small break from that while I expand into some other things. One of my favorite things to do is nail art, specifically stamping. I thought I would hate stamping, but I really enjoy it. I feel like it's really fun. Uh, so I wanted to do some coffee nail stamping this time around. And honestly, I'm going to be showing a love of browns. I'll be using some special effects polishes as my base. And then we're going to be using a stamping plate as well and filling that in with different shades of brown and taupe. I'm really going for that coffee theme. I'm going to be linking all the products that I'm using in the description down below in case you're interested in and knowing what I'm using. But let's go ahead and get started. Also, the stamping plate that I'm using this time around is from Mora, which is Mora, Myra, Mora, M-O-Y-R-A. I think it's Mora. <laughs> this is my first time using this brand. I think I got this from Hella Handmade Creations or Polish Pickup. I don't remember. Maybe I got these from another type of website. I don't remember where I got this one from. Um, but this is a really fun plate. It's very dessert slash coffee themed, if you can tell. But we're just going to be focusing on the coffee themed stamps as well. Um, so I am going to be starting off with a peel off base coat. As usual, I'm using my favorite, which is the Hollow Taco Peely Base. And then we're gonna be starting off with our base colors. I don't always like to do effects polishes as a base. It depends on what I'm putting on top of it because I feel like sometimes it can either overpower the stamp that you put on top of it or you know you might end up putting a stamp on top of it that's so big that it you can't even really see the base which is like why would I go through all that work but in this case I think I found a happy balance where these effects polishes really help balance out the stamps that I'm putting on top of it because I'm using a white background for most of the stamps which I think also helps them pop a little bit and a black background on the lighter colors that I'm using but yeah so I wanted to do a mix of effects polishes from flakies to some glitters to some hollow glitters and flakies so like I said I will link all of those in the description below but we're gonna paint our nails two coats on each and then we'll get into the stamping I also wanted to do a little bit of a progression in terms of like the colors that I picked so it goes from lightest to darkest starting with my thumb I'm using two similar toned colors on my thumb and then it gets progressively darker so I'm using taupes and browns because I'm trying to pick things that like offhand remind me of coffee like as a polish
almost done painting my nails so we are almost ready to get into the stamping. I will say that I had a little bit of difficulty with the stamping. Sometimes I do try to use polishes that are not specifically slated as stamping polishes. It depends on the polish but I tend to be of the opinion if the polish is thick enough it might be able to double as a stamping polish but that was not the case today with some of the ones that I tried so you're not going to see all those fails but I had to go a different route. There was a couple stamps I wanted to use that just weren't working for what I was going for so I ended up going in a different route but I still think it came out really great. So typically what I like to do with stamps is I always like to go in and I do all my stamps. Like once I do all of my base colors on my nails, I do all my stamps at once, which is why it's a great idea to have multiple stampers. Um, in this case, I'm only gonna be filling in a couple of stamps and I'm doing a mix of black and white. Both of these are polishes from Maniology stamping polishes. I'm doing that because I want to do the black stamps over the lighter colors and then I do the white outline stamps over the darker colors. Um, so there are gonna be two stamps that I'm filling in. One is the coffee bean stamp. And then there's another one, which is like a tea slash coffee cup, which I'm gonna be filling in as well. And then the other stamps are just like um, solid stamps or word stamps on their own. So let's get into the fill-in process. All right, all of our stamps are good and ready to go. So we just have two stamps that we're gonna be filling in. As always, I like to fill in my stamps actually on the stamper themselves. And depending on what nail I plan on putting them on, I might fill in the whole thing. Or for instance, if I was putting this on my pinky, I would size this down by using a, a lint roller to just get it to the size of my nail so I wouldn't have to fill in the whole thing. But I plan on putting this on my, I think I end up putting this on my thumb. I don't remember, you know, I, I don't think I had the order in mind. I was just like, I want this one and I want that one. So I'm just gonna fill in this whole stamp, but I'm probably not gonna end up using most of this based on what, uh, what finger I put this on. And then I just like to do varying different colors. I like uh, variety. So I'm going for different shades of brown and taupe when I fill in the coffee cup for some variants. I'm also using a very small and on the thinner side for the nail brush to fill this in. You can fill in things with a dot of cure. Some people use a nail brush. Honestly, I feel like it depends on what you're going for. In this case, even though these are on the smaller side, I'm not filling in the beans with multiple colors. So for me, using this size nail brush works really well. And again, I'm just going some for some variants. So I just like to vary the different colors that I'm using so that I get a good mix when I put the stamp on my nail.
Now that we've got that stamp filled in, it is time to get all of our stamps applied. So I do a very thin coat of the Orly Bonder base. I let that dry for a good 60 seconds because I don't want it to be like fully dry, but I don't want it to be still wet. So I let it dry and then I'm going to apply my stamps, which I do in a rolling motion. For this finger, I chose to do the, like the EKG uh, coffee cup, if you will. I just thought that one looked really good on this finger. And I think the black really pops against this light color as well. And we're gonna be applying those other stamps before we do a final top coat and showing off my whole hand. Some people like to do liquid latex around um, when they do the stamp. I feel like it depends for me. It's just like an extra step to have to apply the latex, to have to take the latex off. So I tend to like to, to really just kind of like go in there with a really nice crisp cleanup brush. And that works really well for me as opposed to like having to put down a whole liquid latex barrier as well. And when I finish up with the top coat, I try to do a very thin coat of a polish that's not like super thick. And then I just wanna do like a couple really quick strokes. I just wanna get that top coat on there so I get that sheen, but also hopefully not ruin the integrity of the stamp. That's, that's all a girl can ask for, all right? <laughs> Well, if you want to see a full swatch of this, um, you can check out my Instagram. I always put up full swatches of all of my nail art that I do on my YouTube on my Instagram. And if you like that video, you should go ahead and hit that like button. You should also subscribe if you want to see more content like that from me. And thank you so much for watching. Catch you on the flip side. Later.